Good evening, YouTubers, streamers, and Arizona Deliverance Centerites. Welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. You're in Phoenix, Arizona. Tonight uh, is our spirit spouse night, and uh, anything can happen tonight, I'll tell you that. Thank you for, for uh, coming out. Uh, in uh, our society, uh, uh, in the 1950s, there were no spirit spouses running around America. Uh, but uh, since the late 60s, and then uh, from there forward, uh, America started to become uh, a sexually perverted country and a sexually promiscuous country. And uh, witchcraft, a lot of witchcraft flowed in. And every time you have uh, sexual perversion and witchcraft, you will have spirit spouses moving into the area. That's what they like best is witchcraft and sexual promiscuity. Uh, spirit spouses are nasty. They're home wreckers. They're marriage wreckers. They are relationship killers. They are miscarriage experts. These demons cause you to have miscarriages. They uh, love abortions. They're they are just filthy. And Kelly's done quite a bit of research on spirit spouses. They call them marine spirits in Africa. And for some reason, they're uh, very prevalent around uh, water areas, for some reason, which I don't actually know why. I need to ask uh, Pastor Francis that someday. But tonight will be uh, an interesting evening for you, particularly the altar call. I'll be doing the altar call. You can get delivered from a spirit spouse in your living room if you're on YouTube. I'll show you how to do it tonight. I'll just walk you through it. If you are a person who has had a lot of divorces, broken relationships, miscarriages, lots of divorces, that kind of thing in your family tree, you probably have one of these spirits uh, hanging around. You may even have one yourself, okay? So time to get rid of them. Our next seminar is February 23rd. That's last Friday of February on autoimmune diseases. Forgot to put that up there. My radio ministry has changed. I'm now on uh, every day, Monday through Friday. Plus, I'm on the weekends now, Saturday and Sunday. That's all on the website, too. All the, ra all the radio shows can always be accessed on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. Don't forget that we have some new ministries here. We have a healing room now. Our first healing room was uh, this month. It was a killer. We were swamped with people. Needed help. Needed help. There were so many people, we didn't have enough ministry workers. Uh, I, I ministered to four people that day. Three, three of the people got healed or delivered. The fourth one was a, a lady that got mad at me and ran out the door. So I figured three out of four, you know, I'll show up for three out of four. Yeah. If I was playing baseball, I'd be having, I'd have a multi-million dollar contract, three out of four. But one, and the rest of the ministry team had the same results. It was amazing. The second Saturday of every month, you just come here at noon, you don't need an appointment. Brother Robert is going to be managing it, and uh, it was booming last Saturday. Booming. Rick teaches on the first Friday of every month. His services are fantastic. His teaching is outstanding. All of our services can be found on our YouTube channels. We have four of them. Tonight's is on number two, House of Healing AZ. All of our services are streamed live Thursday night. Peter the Preacher was here Thursday night and did fantastic. They're on live stream and our Friday nights are on a YouTube channel. If you know somebody has a spirit spouse and they're too afraid to come for help or they live in another state, just send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com, and I will send you a copy of one of these miracle lists. If they're not mentally ill Christians, I'll send you the other one. They can go through deliverance right in their own home. They don't need to be here. You can get healed anywhere with the Holy Ghost around. You don't need to be here. He's all over the place. 
he he's a killer he is fantastic all right now you youtubers you know what to do you've got your assignment you open up a terrace cell in your church your church is your mission field and you get your terrace cell together with two or three other believers and you start picking off the sick people one at a time and uh, your ministry will start booming there in your church you'll have people lining up to get healed you can either do it at the church or off-site, doesn't matter. Do it anywhere. And uh, pretty soon the pastor will hear about it. And that'll be the end of you. But if you'll be able to do it for a while, God will protect you or shield you for a while. I did this myself years ago at a mega church in Scottsdale. And I had more people and I knew what to do with coming for help. And then I got caught. So, if you do the right thing in life, the devil will eventually catch you. And that's a good sign. If you get caught doing the right thing, it speaks well of you, believe it or not. <laughs> hey, thank you for your donations. Uh, the, do you happen to notice outside the new parking lot? Nobody noticed that? It's so nice out there. It's so nice, I think I'm just going to walk around there tonight. Instead of Thank you for your donations. That cost, uh, how much does that cost, Arnie? $11,000 for that parking lot out there. What was the guarantee on it? Two-year. Two-year guarantee. And then what else? Last 10 years. Last 10 years. We got a two-year guarantee on it. It's supposed to last 10 years, okay? We won't, be, we won't be here 10 years ago. We're going to sell this back to the Mormons, but before we do that, <laughs> there's a secret tunnel that goes through here from the boiler room, which is on the other side of Kelly's office there, on the other side. And I've been praying and fasting that God will send me a Christian dwarf because it, that tunnel thing's too small for me to get under there. And I've got to get the sense the golden plates are hidden down there. <laughs> and when I get them plates, huh, Cree Flow Dollar is going to be calling me going, how'd you, how'd you do all that? Where'd you get them clothes, boy? <laughs> yes, sir. When you get a call from Cree Flow, you hitting it. <laughs> I give me them plates. I'm out of here. Anyway, thank, no, stop that. Let's get back to something real. Thank you for your kind donations. We paid every bill. We paid every bill that ever blew through the front door there. And we do not have high pressure stuff for money. I don't believe in that. So we'd rather have somebody with a good heart give because they care, even if it's a smaller amount than we would somebody who felt obligated to give and gave more. You know? And we don't like rotten money here. Let's say you had a good week selling Coke. Don't tithe on the Coke sales. Crack. Let's say pot's booming. Pot's booming right now. We don't, don't tithe off that. We don't want any pot money here. You know, I'd rather have you get the money honestly and donate it because you care. That'll get blessed, and then it just multiplies on its own. You know, cheap money and rotten money, that is, that's no good. That's not good. We're not interested in that. Gambling money. Praise God, Brother Mike. My blackjack was on fire this week. Just keep that money. I don't want any blackjack tithing. You know what I mean? Nobody knows what I mean. Well, I know what I mean. I know what I'm talking about. And, and okay, if you've got one of these demons, I guarantee you they'll never leave. They have to be forced out. And they're very jealous. Extremely jealous. They want you and they don't want anybody else to have you. Yeah, I used to have a spirit spouse years ago. And he kept pushing me back to the same woman. You know? You broke up. You know you're not supposed to be with that person. But then something pulls you back. It's the same thing 
battered wives have. They know they shouldn't go back. They're not supposed to go back. Everybody else told them not to go back. But the demons told him he's changed. And so something pulls them back in. See, it's like the Godfather. Once you think you're out, it just kind of, they pull you back in. And they're doing that to hurt you. And they're not going to let you have a loving relationship. They're not going to let you have kids. You know, you're going to get stuck with another miscarriage. These demons are nasty. They are nasty. Okay? So without further ado, I miss anything, Arnie? All right. <laughs> if Arnie doesn't think so, then it's time to go ahead and get this thing going. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kelly Beck's here to help us tonight, and we're going to have a powerful altar call. I'll be back for that. How about a clap for Kelly? Okay, Kath. Boom. How's that? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Ah, right. Would you just uh, kind of help me out tonight and just bow your heads, just giving him praise and glory tonight? There's nothing greater than giving honor, giving glory to him. One day we're going to be in glory. We're going to be in heaven. We're going to be singing to him. But tonight there's nothing greater than praising him. Giving him all the glory. You just went through spiritual dryness, through a trial, through a tribulation. And there's nothing greater than that praise that comes through. The praise that lifts you up out of that darkness. Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for this night tonight. Father, it's all about you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. You have your way in this place tonight. You have your way with us tonight. Tonight, it's all about you, and that's all that matters. It's all about you. And we honor you tonight, and we give you glory. Thank you. Amen. 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 Welcome, uh, YouTubers. Thanks for tuning in and, and uh, stay in touch tonight. Don't go anywhere. You're going to have a powerful deliverance tonight if you uh, really receive uh, what's going to be taught tonight. Before we get started, I don't want to take a Grammy moment. The Holy Ghost is a Grammy Award winner. But I'd like to say thanks to Brother Mike for the opportunity to really step out on faith and uh, to give payback to a couple of spirits that kept me in bondage for decades. Amen. That was shyness and insecurity. And at that time, I didn't know where they were spirits. I didn't know it was a spirit. But God used Brother Mike to cast those spirits out. And you might be thinking later on that you wished he hadn't. But anyway, stay for prayer. You're, you're, you're in a deception. We'll get it out of you. No problem. Also for the team, I learned a lot about this, this uh, spirit spouse through the team. Um, they were willing participants uh, giving me the opportunity to try things and experience on them. We threw out the things that didn't work, and we kept the things that did work. So I owe a, a lot of gratitude to the team. We've, we've overcome a lot of things individually and collectively as a team. And uh, so a lot of that goes just, I, I just want to say thanks to that team. Um, this teaching tonight is going to be one that is new for some. It's going to be old for others, and somewhere in the middle, a refresher. There's going to be some things that you're learning new tonight, but it's a topic that's very difficult to talk about because it's ugly. It's not much fun to talk about. The church doesn't want to hear about it. The church has been deceived. They'd rather just throw it underneath the rug so that they don't have to deal with it. It's not very much fun to go through this spirit spouse stuff. I know about it firsthand. Uh, but there's hope. There's encouragement. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We all know that verse, right? I never really knew what that verse meant until I got in the deliverance ministry. Amen. I don't know how many times I had read that verse. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Great. What truth? What, what does that mean to me? I didn't know how to apply that verse. I read it, but I really didn't understand the depth and the meaning of the truth setting you free. And when I first got started in deliverance ministry, I was one of those that was on fire for God. I thought I was saved, but come to find out I really wasn't. I loved Jesus. 
I loved everything about him, but yet I was seeking out other things, other philosophies. I had all kinds of books of esoteric teaching. Um, in fact, uh, Richard Bach's books, John Fleming Signal, they wouldn't even burn. I tried to burn those. I had to put C4 on those things to burn. Those were written by another spirit. But I was seeking at that time other, other wisdom and other knowledge. And the day that I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I got that born-again experience. And I wanted to take a megaphone to the mountaintop. I wanted to share it with everybody. I wanted everybody to know the power, the presence of God. Because there's nothing greater than knowing that you have that presence within you. People say you have to feel I actually felt it. I know what it's like. I wasn't wallowing and going, oh, I think so. No, I know. So I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs and share with everybody. So I was one of those Christians that he talks about that was on fire, that, that you're sick to be around. I said, you know what? That joy and that peace, that is never leaving me. Mike said, okay, yeah, it always leaves you. I said, no, I'm going to be one of those ones that it, it, it's not going to happen to. <laughs> Get in the deliverance ministry and you'll, you'll see the work of it <laughs> real quick. I was in a spirit of deception. I didn't know it. But anyway, seeing the enthusiasm, you know, I said, hey, I'm ready to get the devil. I'm ready to kick his face in. I'm ready to go give him payback. Amen. And Mike said, okay. He saw the, the zealousness of it. And so I had a couple, four counseling sessions all in one day. One was a walk-in. I had five in one day. I mentioned this a while back, but uh, I said, great, bring it on. I'm ready. By the fourth or fifth one, my stomach was nauseated. By the fifth, I had to go take a break and throw up. Because the stories that I heard were stories that were fiction. This, this couldn't be happening. I thought these people were actresses. I said, did you come from Hollywood or something? Because you're reading a script right out of a horror movie from Stephen King novel. This doesn't happen to people. How, what I was hearing, I wasn't used to hearing those kinds of things happening to people. I was around that. I didn't experience that growing up, listening to it. So I was in a deception. So I thought, wow, my soul started getting downcast, like King David talks about. Why is my soul so downcast? I started taking on the burdens of the pains and the wounds, all these things that the women came in with. I was living their experiences. And so I became really heavy laden. And four out of the five got delivered that night. And when I got home, I got in my vehicle, and some of the things that you do in deliverance ministry is you start analyzing, you start talking to the Lord. Hey, did I miss something here? What is it? You know, I'm, I'm wet underneath the ears. Of course I missed everything. But you're talking to the Lord, trying to figure out, could I have said something differently? Could I have used this? For, could, how could I have helped this person a little bit differently? And so as I'm talking down, I'm almost, almost home, and, and I hear this voice that goes, Hey, I want you to read Judges 19. Okay, I'll read Judges 19 tonight. Already knowing that my soul is already at a low point. I'm down, I'm downcast, very heavy laden, trodden. And I should have caught it. I should have picked up because I know that story of Judges 19. But I get home and I open that Bible up. And what is it? The story about the concubine who gang raped repeatedly, left on the porch to die, and cut up in 12 pieces to be sent to the 12 tribes. It wasn't the voice of God. That wasn't the voice of God. And he got me. It took one chapter, and the devil got me. He got me meditating on that one chapter, those verses, on that story of Judges. He knew the devil plays on your weaknesses. He looks at your flaws. He plays on your behavior. He knew my emotion. I was very vulnerable. I was very open. A lot of people go, well, how can that happen? You're filled with the Holy Ghost. You got the blood of Jesus. Yep, I sure did. But I also let my guard down. I gave him permission to come in. By I started meditating on that woman that got raped. I meditated on her. Now I grew angry. I was mad at God. I actually hated God. I'm six months. I was just on the megaphone telling everybody about the presence of God. Now I actually hated him. I was so angry at him. And you know the next thing I wanted to do? I wanted to share it with somebody. I wanted to tell somebody. Yep. Who not to better to tell it to hmm, on my phone? Have you, ever, have you ever sent an email with a spirit of anger and hatred behind it? <laughs> Michael W. Smith. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind about our God. <laughs> so sure enough, 
I can laugh about it now. It, it was actually really funny. I can laugh, but at the time it wasn't funny. Right. But as I'm going through, you know how texts are? Big, bold, capitalized letters, exclamation point after each one? Yeah. Let me tell you something, Brother Mike, about our God. That thing was sent over with fury. And what came back was, I can remember, I can recall it to this day, was a lot of peace came back. Truth. He was hitting me with truth. Oh, yeah? You like that? Oh, how about this? Boom. I kept sending him. See, I wanted to be right. I wanted to prove him wrong. That's how the devil gets you. He gets Christians to go against the workers of God, saints of God, men of God. This was a man of God, and I was being used to attack a man of God. I wanted to be right. I was going to prove him wrong about our God that we serve. And again, I got this truth back. And I was like, wow. I kind of, you know, you have that darkness, but you also have that little bit of light that's trying to, it's trying to shine through. And I kept saying, no, no. And pretty soon it got intense. You know how you flow in the Holy Ghost? I was flowing with the devil's tongue. I was perverting scripture like no tomorrow. I was twisting everything to him. And every time he just came back with the word of God. And I keep thinking, I'm not making a comparison, but I kept thinking, I keep thinking about how Satan must have been frustrated when he tempted Jesus on the mountain and he couldn't get through and he kept getting truth back. That's the way I felt. I just kept giving him everything, perverted text, perverted truth, perverted verses. And he kept coming back with me with truth. And finally, he just said, hey, you need to get off this email and answer your phone. I'm calling you right now. He could see, he could see where this was going. And like a rebellious child, I don't know if you've ever had or been around rebellious children, but now my font has grown into 182 type. The letter N was this wide, <laughs> bold, italicized, underlined. No. <laughs> and he, Mike talks about the hand anointing. I think the Lord's right arm came down and hit me across the side of that head, and I picked up that phone. See, the devil knew what he was doing, but God was one step ahead. Thank God he had me email Brother Mike. I needed to seek wise counsel for the time that I was, I was in darkness. Right. It took over an hour, maybe two hours, to get that truth back into me. And I, I, would, I would start to interject, but he'd go, just stop. Just listen. Just listen. And I would, I would get a little bit of that truth. I'd, okay, yeah, that's sad, but I'd always put a but into it. I, I would, I'm trying to, again, but he, he brought me back to the truth. I cried so much after that, that session because here I was loving on God. And I was hating him at the same time. I wasn't crying because of what happened to me. I felt bad for me. I felt bad because I hurt the Lord with that. And how quick the devil came in. He got me. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. You got the blood of Jesus. You got your armor on. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you let your guard down one second, he'll come in. He almost took that ministry from me. He almost took that from me. I was ready to reject God. I was ready to just say, you know what? I've had enough with this God. But it took wise counsel. People say all the time on Facebook, hey, you just need the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. You don't need man. You know what? The last person I wanted to talk to was the Holy Ghost. I was mad at him. I didn't want anything to do with him. But the Lord sent me that email to Brother Mike. I needed wise counsel. To bring me back. Sometimes you need people. Sometimes you can't do it alone. Sometimes you need to reach out and ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. I needed help. I was embarrassed that I needed help with a Christian. You know, I'm on fire for God and I needed help. I almost got duped. So now when I read that verse, that verse reads so differently for me. It's so profound when you understand the truth. Really, the truth is the only thing that will ever set you free. It's the only thing that can set you free. Lies of the devil will come in. He'll take you when you're at your most vulnerable time. I don't care who you are. You let your guard down, and he's going to slip in. Amen. Okay? So having said that intro, let's get started. Let's get going on this. All right. Uh, tonight's sources come from these books, KJ3, Who You Are. A lot of this information I gathered from this source, Dr. Olikaya, from Africa, and uh, Erica Joseph her little booklet, she's got 27 years of experience with this demon firsthand. But nothing beats the hands-on OJT training of the prayer room at the House of Healing. We've done over 700. The Lord has casted out, delivered people of over 700 people with that. 
lot of people came in with tales of woe, but more importantly, they left with victory. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Grateful for that room. I learned a lot in that room. A lot of questions we get here is why do we suffer so many defeats in our lives? Every Christian gets asked that question. Hey, the Bible says the way is hard and the road is narrow. In the book Art of War, Sun Tzu had written, if you know your enemies and know yourselves, you will not be imperiled in a hundred battles. If you don't know your enemy or know yourselves, you're going to be imperiled in every single battle. Born again Christians today do not study themselves. They don't know who they really are because they've never been taught about the spiritual realm. They don't know about the things in the spirit world. And the church has been tricked. They've been tricked by the enemy telling them that, hey, You've lost all power and authority. I've got control of the spiritual realm. He doesn't. It says in the Bible, the heavens belong to God. Amen. So that's one of the reasons we're going to suffer defeat. What battle are we talking about? Satan's battle plan. Do you know Satan has a battle plan for your life? He wages war over life and death. He's waging war over your soul to damn it eternally. He wants to damn your soul. He's the architect of sin. 2 Corinthians 4 says he is the God of this world. He's got a spiritual blueprint laid out in front of his general contractor. He's got an army to carry out an empire. Generals, lieutenants, captains. He's got a hierarchy. And he's coming out with his plans. It's not to build anything up. It's to tear you down. He's not doing you anything to build up the body of Christ. He's coming to tear you down. All he wants to do is like a military coup, come to overthrow God's government. All he wants to do is get you separated from God. That's all his plan is. And I know that you're thinking that I could have stayed home and watched CNN and Fox News and got better news than this. But, ha, Paul Harvey says, now you know the rest of the story. That's right. Christ has a battle plan for you. Yes, he, does. he does. He's waging war for eternal life. He's got a spiritual blueprint for the abundant life. Where does he have his plans? Right here. Right there in your heart where he abides. John 15 says, abide in me. I in you. Yeah. Praise God that he has that power to overthrow Satan. So who are these spirits and what, are, what do they do? What do they want? Well, I threw that in just as a, a surprise there. A church you can relate to. It's been looking for a church like yours. I'm really into sin and have absolutely no desire to change. That is the sad state of our church today. Ah. Oh. Somebody said, I think Kimmy E. sent that on Facebook. Thanks, Kim, for that little, little chart. But it's true. But what, what do these do? Everyone's heard of the term incubus, succubus. If you've been in any kind of deliverance, you know these spirits. They're not two different spirits. They're one spirit. The incubus comes to attack the females. The succubus comes and transforms to take on the male. They have the power to shape shift. They have the power to put into any, any entity they want to get to that person. They'll actually go into animals, too. They'll send a dog to bite you, your cat to scratch you, a dog to buck you off, to overthrow you. I've actually had all three of those happen. But these spirits, are they, they all actually are uh, termed differently. Africa, they call them night wives, night husbands. Here we call them spirit wives, spirit husbands. Like the Tower of Babel, when they had all the magicians up on top, they all spread. They all have different names. The different types, residential, they make love to you and come back every night. There's a lot of people that can't wait to go to bed at 9 o'clock p.m. Why? They're conjuring up this demon. They're actually willfully calling them up to pleasure them. The masquerading spirits, they use familiar faces like your husband or wife. They, they're going to send you a person that they know you can't resist. That's why lust is a very dangerous thing because the devil will give you and send you the person of that face into your dream. The other ones hidden sleep with you in dreams but you don't realize it. These are very dangerous ones. A lot of times you will wake up bloated. You, never, you didn't go to bed bloated but you feel bloated. In some way you feel aroused. You've been touched by something in the middle of the night. And what they do is they steal the memory of that dream from you. They want to steal it from you so you don't remember it so you don't have to deal with it. They know if you're on to him that you're going to go to spiritual warfare and cast this thing out. So they demonically put amnesia into you so that you don't remember them. The other type is physical. They go anywhere with you as monitoring experiences, monitoring spirits. Um, just like the book of Acts where the woman who was had, was had a spirit of divination, a python spirit, following Paul and Silas. Yeah, they gather information about you. 
There's a messenger that's trying to gather information about you. Be very wary of people who are befriending you and are gathering personal information. They're getting a little too close to you. They're actually being used by the enemy to monitor you. There's other ones, they uh, bring in more to have gang sex, gang rape. Other, other one is astral sex, soul travel. We're hearing more and more about astral sex, soul travel. Uh, I also learned that in astral sex, people who are associated with Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, Dianetics, part of their program to get on the ship, okay, I don't know about that. You can have your people call Cruz or Travolta. I don't know anything about that. But part of their program is them being able to come out of their body, look down at their body, and go to another. And they have no problem having sex with women, astral projecting. Uh, this story that Erica had talked about before, she was actually on a, on a missions trip from the West Coast to the East Coast. A minister had asked her to, to speak for a few days. She was doing a deliverance too. And when she got there, she said she noticed something very different that, that created a red flag in her body. This pastor had talked about how he had this woman over here. She was 12 years old. She was 15 years old, and they're never leaving. They've never left. They're, in their, they're, they're adults now. But that they weren't leaving, and she got this check in her spirit. She thought, well, that, didn't, that didn't sit too right. Well, that evening after the thing, the, the Lord told her not to take up an offering. So the next day, same thing. Lord told her not to take an offering. But the pastor kept talking about these people, the ministries, aren't going to leave. These women aren't going to leave. And she started to notice that there were more women in this church than there were men, strong men. The men who were there, five of them, one was blind, one was crippled, the other three, she said, weren't very strong at all. And so she just got this little bit of check in her spirit again. Well, this pastor had talked to this mirror said, you're going to stay here. You're not leaving. You're not going back. You're going to stay here. And she said, no, I'm going back in three days. Well, that upset him. And do you know that night she wrestled with a demon? And she said, when she looked into that demon's eye, she saw that pastor looking back. The next day she told that pastor, hey, you need deliverance. And he said, no, I don't. She said, yeah, you do. And he said, no, I don't want deliverance. She said, what do you mean you don't want it? He said, no, I do deliverance. I have physical sex with these women, and I also have astral sex with women. And do you know that night he was upset because they took a, an offering that day, and he told her that she would get half of that proceeds from that offering. For whatever reason, he was upset. He threw this money at her, and do you know that night he came in human form, astral sex. That pastor did to her in the middle of the night. When she got up the next morning, she said, she told her driver, let me get out of here as quick as you can. I'm not going to be Lot like slaves. I'm going to be like Lot. I'm not going to turn around until I'm across that state line. Astral, project, astral sex is very, it's common today. We're hearing a lot more about it. I don't know what the difference is between soul travel and astral. I know that one comes in a, a misty-like haze and the other one comes in human form. Um, and they can also transfer into animals to come seek you. Again, their number one preference is a body. They're looking for a body to inhabit. Okay, they're looking for rest. Three things they don't have, the breath of God, the blood of Jesus, and without a body, they're dead. The rest they're looking for is not the rest that you and I have to lay down. Their rest consists of creating havoc, torment, harassment, anything that they can do to cause chaos, to bend the will of the person to their will. So now that you can become their what? Their spiritual slave. Like an addict, Okay, cocaine, marijuana, drugs, food, sex, cigarettes is not the problem. The problem is lust. These spirits are powerful lust demons. They come in with unclean sex. And again, their self-preservation tactics is let us alone. We don't exist. They try to get the person to believe that their problems are their own. Their behaviors are their own. The origin must belong to someone else. And again, the church has done a good job at La, 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 holding their ears. Hey, also, it's known as the old hag. Sleep paralysis. I don't know about you, but I've gone through sleep paralysis. It's a scary thing to go through. Man, uh, if, you'll, if you'll see there that uh, this picture was done in the uh, 18th century, 1781. There's a horse there, symbolic of the male symbol. He's looking over the female genitalia. This, this portrait here is of a portrait of a woman being tortured by this incubus spirit. That demon there sits on your chest. That's the one 
that you feel that heaviness. It feels like you can't breathe. You're paralyzed by fear. He's actually called the demon of mare. That's where we get our nightmare term. He's actually a demon that comes in without the sexual component of it, but he's there to inflict terror, to inflict fear on you, paralyzing you. And uh, they, in Africa, they, they, would, they would talk to each other and they'd say, yeah, I, I had a roll with the old hag last night. In, uh, in China, in Southeast Asia, it's known as Iwo Jin. In the Hmong area, crushed demon. Others, they're known as the demon that lays. And uh, sure, they lay all right. There was a, a, every time the emperor in Japan gets inducted, they spent $50 million on a ceremony to welcome in this goddess to this emperor to have sex. So you've got a whole nation who is being nationalized by a succubus demon. Wow, dangerous. The old hag. William Shakespeare wrote about it in his play, Romeo and Juliet, in scene one. Talking about this is the hag that, that makes maidens lie on their back, making women of good carriage. Merlin, the uh, wizard of the King Arthur series, was thought to be sired by a succubus spirit and by a satyr. A satyr is, is a, a, a mythology creature that came in human form, goat, goat in human form. He's mentioned in Isaiah 34 as crying to the land of the people, and the screech owl comes to seek rest. Screech owl is another term for Lilith, which we'll kind of go through a little bit later. Um, but again, these are what these spirits are known for. And uh, here's some of our wonderful entertainers who have had sex with the ghost. Keisha, in 2012, she had an uh, interview with Ryan Seacrest. I didn't have the heart to put the, the interview with uh, Conan O'Brien on. If anybody had a lust demon, they would, they would sure pick up a, a spirit just by that interview with him. Um, but she had told him that she had sex with a demon. They made fun of it, and they said, was his name Casper the Friendly Ghost? Yeah, no, he wasn't named Casper the Friendly Ghost. Um, but she entertained it. Uh, Lucy Lou, a spirit came down, made love to me. It was sheer bliss. Oh, yeah, it's sheer bliss, all right. Another, Anna Nicole Smith, we all know about her. She was taken prematurely. God, I wish she were here. I'd love to pray for Anna Nicole Smith, letting her know. She welcomed these spirits in. She couldn't wait. She conjured them up. These spirits use familiar spirits. They'll also conjure up through necromancy. Widowers who are having sex with their dead wife or their dead husband are being conjured up through necromancy, through familiar spirits. So these are some of our entertainers that are influencing our kids today. He cuddled, Dan Aykroyd cuddled with a male ghost, Co uh, Coco Austin, wife of Ice-T. Uh, they groped her, breathed in her ear. I've had, I've had spirits that try to whisper in your ear, just mess with you, harass you. Natasha Blasick, it was really pleasurable. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, what's the goal of them? To defile God's holy temple, to control and subdue their victims. How they control the demon of mare. They paralyze you. They pin you down so that you can't move. You can't do anything. They destroy the, the victim's life. Their personal, their, their goal is to, through defilement, okay? They trick the person that they don't exist. They cause a marriage covenant to be formed in the spiritual realm. Did you know that? Anytime that you entertain sex with this, with this spirit, you are actually making a marriage covenant in the spiritual realm. They don't show any mercy attacking their victim. They now will get you while you're driving a car. They no longer attack you at night. They'll get you while you're reading a car, reading the word. You know, you feel sensations down there. You're being aroused by something. You better check this spirit out. It's a lust problem that gets turned into burning lust, then insatiable lust. Burning lust is a lust that can't be satisfied. Some people satisfy this lust by what? Shopping, buying clothes, music, food. If it's brought on by a sex demon, it's sensual. This is a spirit that cannot be satisfied. He will not let you go. They wear you down. The victims will. They pervert the faith, leaving victims broken without a sense of God's purpose. How they do it? He wears you down through nightmares. How? By heart-wrenching ones, sex ones, to impose a negative impact on the will of the person. He lets in these sexual dreams to bring on a sexual assault. What does that look like? Sex in a dream means that a lust spirit is wanting to have his way with you. Okay? If you do, you're going to become like a, ca a, a caged monkey. And the result of that is going to be Proverbs 29, 22. An angry man stirreth up strife. A furious man is boundeth in his transgressions. 
You'll wake up, you'll be angry for no reason. You'll start arguing with people for no reason. And your family is going to notice that short temperament of yours. And you don't understand where it's coming from. If you're a woman having a sex in a dream, you're going to be living like Jeremiah 10, 20. My tabernacle is devastated. My sons have gone out from me. Yeah, this spirit doesn't want anyone to be close to you. Your family, your kids, your spouse. He's here to break your family up. And he does it through ignorantly letting in lust and promiscuity by entertaining these spirits. It causes ones to have love affairs and dreams. Like Natasha Blasket, it causes you uh, to have a marriage covenant built in that spiritual realm. Okay? We can't blame everything on demons. We're not here to blame everything on spirits. Okay? Not everything is his fault. Demons and spirits can only pressure us. They can only havoc and, and harass us. Okay? But it's because you have believed a lie that he is much more powerful than God. That is not true. God is much more powerful. Okay? Therefore, when you're casting out anger, we're not letting that person off the hook. We're trying to get to the root of what's causing that anger behind it. Generally, look for this spirit. He's the one or she's the one that's causing this havoc. Okay? They cause arousal up to a point and leave you, let you finish with masturbation so you crave nightly encounters. He leaves victims deeply disturbed, tormented with intense sexual urges. People have been tricked through masturbation. And like Mike says, he doesn't want to go there. I don't want to go there because it's not in the Bible. But you can blame Dr. Ruth on the American culture for masturbating. She's the one that got the American culture into masturbation. And, and while you're doing that, you might as well say, come on in, spirit spouse. Have your way with me. Come sit and dine with me. The moment that this demon comes in, okay? Like, for instance, if you watch porn by a mission or commission, you're looking at nakedness, you're looking at porn. It only takes one image of pornography to train, to redo your mind, retrain that brain. One image. The devil knows that, and he will give you that image into your mind. He'll allow you to focus and meditate on it. He gives you the senses, the urges behind it, so that what? You'll masturbate. You'll give in to the spirit. But what you're doing is inviting a spirit of sexual perversion into your life. All he wants to do is bend the will of that person to defile the body, to defile the temple, and make you his spiritual slave. It goes for men and women both. What does he do? He draws a victim into sexual sin. Yeah, what happens when you have an affair with the spirit? Bondage. Darkness. A separation to your spouse who was a love of your life. All he wants to do is break a marriage up. And he'll do it. One day, you're finding yourself single and you want to be married, but you're going to have a hard time finding a suitable partner. Next thing you know, you are repelling everybody. Your personality, you can't figure out what's going on. And then, then when you entertain this, if you're married, like Mike says, hell's coming to breakfast. Why? He brings in chaos. He brings in confusion. And then he prematurely gets death to your spouse. So that you're alone. You're left alone. You're left feeling abandoned, feeling rejected. Why? He wants to come in and fill that void in your life. There's an invisible war that we can't see between the spirit and the flesh. Paul talked a lot about that. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, to free you from its influences, to spring forth righteousness. 17 Psalms says, when you're on his path of destruction, you are out of the boundaries of God's kingdom. The evil way is absent of the word of God. Righteousness is a front guard. God's glory is a rear guard. Isaiah 58 says that. It's constantly wars from the front and the back. Paul mentions it in 2 Corinthians about our weapons are of righteousness for the right hand attack. That was what God, that was his right hand. He was one step ahead of the devil. He came down and just gave me a right hand, mighty arm anointing. Praise God for that. But this way is what empowers us to bring forth victory. The purposes of these spirits, again, they're to attack the soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect are in the soul. If he can get to the soul, he's got you. Why? Because he knows that all of us Christians, we walk according to their flesh. We're supposed to walk according by faith, not by sight. We're not to walk according to our feelings. Our feelings always lie. Why? The devil's behind it. Okay? A lot of people tell us that we give power to the devil, we give power to demons. No, we don't. We're trying to expose them for what they were. This chart was taken from that book. I, I, uh, I thought I'd throw that in there. It's kind of interesting. In the book of Luke, Jesus talked more about how Satan operates. He talks more about demons, how to overcome them, 
than the number of times that he talked about living a holy life in the book of Luke. This is where the church fails. Okay? They taught more about holiness, but they failed to put the emphasis on what Jesus put it on, overcoming that enemy. Wherefore, take to you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil in its day. Yep, I had the armor of God on that day. Man, it's a spiritual battle. It's a war, folks. Satan imitates God and everything that he can to deceive man into thinking that there is power on earth, power on earth that God and his children don't have. And that is an absolute lie. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me under heaven and earth. If the iron is blunt and he doesn't wet the faces, he must add more strength. You can't be passive about the spirit. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy you. They will not roll over and let you beat them without a fight. And guess what? He operates undercover. Your children are not exempt from this spirit. Have you ever had an account with, with, with children? I know this from, from, from young, from, from children uh, uh, delivering of three or four years old, of this spirit. The spirit comes to your child at night and befriends this child. And guess what? You've got an imaginary friend. Ooh, George is here. Sally's here. Imaginary friends are these spirits. They seduce the child in the middle of the night. And now a week from now, a month from later, your child is acting in a strange, in a, in a behavior, in a way that, you, that this child has never responded before. You need to look into this spirit because he's had a visitation or she's had a visitation during the night. So how do they get in your body? Um, this way. The eye gate, the ear gate, mouth gate, the dung gate. Yeah. These are door openings. Pornography, ears, music, occultic music, provocative music. That's how they come in. Have you ever been abused? Thought you were gay, bisexual, lesbian, committed? Yeah. Guess what? That's not you. You're not gay. You're not lesbian. You're not homosexual. The spirit influencing that person is. See, demons give you what they are. They mimic what they are. There's people that are married, that have kids, that have children. And unbeknownst, they had a, a, spirit, a priest that may have raped them when they were five or six years old. A spirit transferred into their body. And now, all of a sudden, they're having thoughts about men, wanting to be with men. That's not them. It's this spirit that is influencing them to be homosexual. They're not homosexual. Pornography, same way. He brings in fear. He brings in hopelessness. He brings in guilt. He brings in shame along with it. He attacks the body through abusiveness, impure acts such as rape, harlotry. He attacks the ears through listening to music, the eyes through pornography. If you don't rebuke this thing and cast this thing out, guess what? It's going to lead to sexual sin, more sexual sin in your life. Did you ever want to be powerful, control, awaken the kundalini within, curse people, be violent? Yeah. He transfers his spirits through looking at pictures, satanic films, occultic music. Then guess what? He brings in mental illness, autism, bulimia. All these spirits are coming in through door openings, horoscopes, Ouija boards, occultic, man, the list goes on. Ever been raped, ever been molested, battled with loves, fornication, the devil knows your weaknesses and he's going to play on those weaknesses. Paul talked about principalities at work. These principalities here at work. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, we wrestle against principalities, power, spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. These spirits here, Abaddon, Belial, Baal, Peor, these are all at work against the spirit. They have a king over them, Revelation 9, 11. In Hebrew, his name was Abaddon. In Greek, his name is Apollyon. In the Greek word, that means eternal destroyer. Okay? He works through deception. How does he do that? He seduces people into false religions. Idolatry is the work of him. New Age, witchcraft, Wicca. Okay? He works through familiar spirits. And uh, now there's a, a thing called love magic, love witchcraft. I'm going to be speaking to a lot of people here tonight about that. Okay? For an example, there's a woman, Holly. She's a good woman of God. She attends his church regularly. That morning she read her horoscope, went to a psychic reader, something simple that opened the door. She goes to church, she meets this guy, Oscar. And he gives them a little, she gives them a little look. They both connect. They both have that look. Well, that look the spirit saw. 
And he told that man, Oscar, hey, that's going to be your wife. She's repelled against him. She can't stand him. But you know what happens? Oscar goes home to his aunt and he says, hey, you know what? I think I met my wife today. She says, really? You better check that. You better pray about that. And he said, I am. I'm going to go pray right now. He gets down on his knees and he prays a psychic prayer. Have you ever prayed a psychic prayer? Putting your will on God? Manipulating God into what you want Him to do? Your will be His will be done. Not His will be done, but your will be done? Yeah, it's real. So the next week they go to church and guess what? Yeah, he's going down the aisle and he just smiles at little Holly. That's all it took was a little smile. And all of a sudden Holly says, whoa, that's the best smile I've ever seen. And as a matter of fact, that's the best looking man I've ever seen. Like Brother Mike says, he packing. He's looking. He's looking good to her. <laughs> She's got this soul high attraction, but she doesn't know why. Well, it's forming a covenant, the soul tie, this love magic coming in, forming a covenant with this person. Very dangerous. Now, this is a woman of God, reserved, preserved, wanting and waiting for the right man of God. But now she's got this attraction to him that she can't understand why. So Oscar goes back to Anne. She says, hey, this is the one. I really like her. And she said, well, all right. She said, you know, your grandma had whipped up a potion. That's how your granddaddy got her. And he says, I got my right. He'll make up a potion. All you got to do is just rub this on yourself and go stand next to Holly at the altar. He says, okay. So the next church meeting, guess what? Holly goes down to the altar. And there's Oscar standing right beside her. And all it took was one single touch right next to her. And this voice whispered into Holly, hey, I think that's your husband. That wasn't the voice of God. That was an ungodly demonic voice who has now created and formed this soul tie. So guess what happens? She finds him irresistible. She can't stay away from him. He starts to take her out. He says, hey, let's go to a movie. She says, all right. Next thing you know, he brings her home. He seduces her, enters into fornication, and she runs home crying, saying to myself, why in the world did I do that? Folks, this is real stuff that's happening. You don't know what's going on. Just a simple act of a door opening will allow these spirits at work. Okay? So idolatry is their favorite thing. What agreement does Christ have with Belial? Belial means lawlessness. They personify wickedness. Numbers 25, Baal, a god of the Moabites, and Israel was joined to Baal Peor. The anger of Jehovah burned against Israel. Behold, these through the word of Balaam became to the sons of Israel. Baal, uh, Peor means lord of the opening. Peor, he was the god of the Moabites. Peor means a cleft or opening. It was symbolic of a woman's female genitalia. The supreme divinity was Baal. The female deity or supreme being was Ashereth. He represented the sun. She represented the moon. He represented Jupiter. She, he repre she represented Venus. It prevailed in the time of Moses and the Moabites. Temples were erected of Baal in Judah. He was worshipped with ceremony. Okay, Most likely Paul, when he was speaking about Corinthians, what agreement? In 614, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. They were joined with this false god, Peor, on the hill of Peor, where he was worshipped. Satan today is using our superstars to bring in this movement, this music, to worship sexual immorality, free sex. It's okay to give in to your fleshly desires, your lower carnal nature. You're an opening for a door wide open for lust and promiscuity. Along with it, STDs. The Bible says we are to flee from sin, not to run to it. It brings in the goddess of Asher, sexual mortality, Baal temples dedicated to prostitutes. These pop entertainers, they're passing on their listeners and fans through music. They're bringing on a spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is what Asher looks like. There was a Baal Peor, the Shittim was the orgy, where, the orgy of Shittim in numbers that they talked about. Men had sex with the Moabite women. Again, Apollyon at work, leading these men into false religions, false worshiping. That's what they did. They, had, they brought their men over to have sex with them. Lil' Kim, yeah, she's a great entertainer. She sets her up as an astroth pole. Her music flow rider was about oral sex. Nice what your kids are listening to today. Others include Beyonce, 
Lady Gaga. I'm not so sure about Lady. I haven't done any research on on where her. Yeah, uh, Katy Perry, and also it brings in the stripper pole. Okay, they're worshiping actually the Asher pole. There's now workouts with stripper poles. Christian men have them installed in their bedrooms for their wives to ignite sexual. They're doing. They're bringing on a spirit of seduction and perversion. Right? It's not okay to bring these Baal worshiping into your home. This is what the Asher pole looked like back in Alexandria. This is our modern day pole. Good Lord. Sorry about that. Oh no. That took that did it right there. Our bodies are redeemed. Do you know they belong to God? Amen. Oh. Oh, I desire you to be without care. The unmarried one cares for the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. The one marrying cares for the things of the world, how to please a life, how to please a wife. When married, the desire to please your spouse is there for their spouse. That's what pleases the Lord. If you're single, you want to be married. If you're married, you want to be divorced. Why have we submitted to this where we are no longer pleasing our spouse or pleasing the Lord? I think this spirit spouse is an operation. He comes to divide and break up the marriages. We entered into a spiritual covenant with a soul tie that we, unbeknownst to us, we didn't know. We opened the door to it. Okay? It's not wrong for a person to want to be married. Some of them will quote Genesis 2.18 that God said we are not to be alone. But they fail to miss the importance of it. I will bring you a helpmate. People who are wanting to get married do not want helpmates. They want men and women with fiery lust, someone to drive their passions, driving them from the will of God, and instead brings in a hindermate. That's not from God. He's bringing you in a hindermate. You think you went to bed with a knight in shining armor only to wake up with Prince Frog. What does he look like? That's him right there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that's ugly. How can we overcome this? Have you ever gotten in, in, in violent fights? This spirit is behind the arguing. Why? The model, I kind of broke this down. This is a model of relationships, how they work. This is kind of similar to Holly and Oscar. Yep. Here they are at the altar. They think they match perfectly. He's, he's your wife. He's your husband. That's my wife. Little do they know they're bringing in all this baggage. Horoscopes, occultic, pornography, lust, rape, adultery. Okay? Pretty soon, the closer that they get, they recognize that they're, they're not perfect. They're not perfect, but the other one has all the faults. Okay? It's not me. It's always the other person. The closer they move toward, the more they think everyone else has the faults. So now this wall gets built up. That wall is a spirit husband or a spirit wife. Now she is rejected. Okay? Why? Because you were never meant to be together in the first place. You didn't check it out. You didn't go to premarital counseling. You didn't go through deliverance before you got married. So now this wall has been built up. Now she goes sleeping. She goes out with the girls. He goes on to, to play golf and has sports meetings and goes plays poker with the boys. Okay? Now she's rejected. He's, he's jacked. But the only way... <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just yet. The only way to come together is by having Christ at the center. The Lord must change in me to make me like Jesus. Hey, when you start pointing the finger at somebody else and blaming someone else, you better start doing this. Okay? I had to do that. It's hard to admit when you're wrong. It's hard to admit that you've got fallacies and flaws. <sighs> That's the worst thing, right? Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit in which you have from God and you are not of yourselves? Do you know you were bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus? Mendiculous care and wealth was taken in the Old Testament times to build that temple. It was a house of God. People were to know that God dwelt there. Do you know that the Holy Ghost lives in you? Who? A person. Okay? Every thought, every deed, every action is brought into His insight. Okay, And it is to build you up in the body of Christ, to glorify God in it, regenerating, indwelling, anointing, sanctifying, purifying, giving every good gift of God. Every good gift. Do you know that He sees you of value the same way that you value your iPhone, your iPad, your Louis Vuitton purse? He hurts when you misuse His product. You belong to Him. 
Your body is his. And the devil comes in to defile it. Okay? What, is the, what does that look like? Here's, the, here's what marriage should look like. Christ is the head of the husband. The husband's head of the wife. The wife, the head of the children. It doesn't mean that you're inferior. It doesn't mean that you are to be his slave. It's just a hierarchy that God created. If the woman is the head of the household, you're in for some trouble. You're in for some Jezebelic experiences, not very pleasant ones. God's plan for our lives for sex is healthy. Okay? Man and woman establish a separate family from their parents. They will cleave, unite, bond to each other. The one flesh sexual relationship will start after God ordained that marriage. God created us for covenant sexuality, sex and emotional int in intimacy. Do you know he designed sex to fulfill his plan for intimacy, procreation? It's not just a physical act. It's a spiritual act. God's involved in the process. It's a sacred thing to him. Sex is a very sacred thing to him. He is involved when those two become one. The goal of the spirit husband is to break up any marriage that he has. Why? He hates marriages. This spirit is jealous. He will stir up strife. He'll stir up arguments. All he wants to do is divide and conquer. He doesn't like marriages. Why? Because it was the very first institution that God created. And he knows that you're going to want to have kids. And now you're going to be creating a heck of a body of a spiritual warfare. When two or more agree, man, you got power in the family. Who's on fire for God? Wow, the devil, the devil has no place. When you are separated from God, when God is not that three-quart strand, he is not in the midst of your marriage, the husband and wife distance will be great. But when God is in the center of that, your distance between a husband and wife is close. You've got God in the work of that. You've got God in the middle of that. So what do they do? How do they affect us? What are their symptoms? Ah, perversion, lust, burning lust. Driving you to addictions. Okay? The addictions aren't your problem. They are a symptom of a problem. Unclean spirits, lust spirits, abortion, incest, lesbianism, pornography. They control fashion through seductive dressing and hair. Hey, women, we're not to cause our men to stumble. You go out and temp looking like that, have, everything's hanging out. You might as well invite a spirit husband into your life because you are tempting that. We're dressed modestly, okay? They're on to you. Lilith, we talked about her a little bit. In Jewish mythology, she was a dangerous demon of the night. She would actually come and steal your babies. How does she do that? Through miscarriages, okay? I'm not saying everything is related to that, okay? There could be inherited things that come down from that, but miscarriages is one of the operation and a symptom of this spirit. A lot of times, if you'll notice, there's something wrapped around her leg, um, these spirits are are related to the marine kingdom. We don't I don't want to go there tonight because it's deep and powerful There's spirits in the heavenly spirits in the earth and there's a whole underworld Underwater spirits that are very powerful. They've got their own kingdom and uh, that'll be for another Bible study um, But literally they're uh, they're water spirits and women who come in and have had deliverance same thing with men Have noticed that there's they feel like there's something crawling around in them at night that'll wake them up and the medical likes to term it restless legs. Okay, again, you might have an electrical, Im electrolyte imbalance of calcium, magnesium. I don't know, but they they tell the person to go seek doctors to find the the problem. The root of the problem is the spirit. They're water spirits. So if you think about jellyfish, if you think about octopuses, all these things, they have tails. The tail is what penetrates the man in his. I'm sorry to be blunt. In his anus, it. Uh, if my mother could see me now. I never had a conversation about sex with my mother. I found out it through my, my siblings, you know, through friends. But the tail is, is what also is, penetrates the woman of the vagina. There have been women, I've had two cases here, where they went to the doctor and she was bleeding. And it looked like a razor blade was taken to it and cut up. It has a tail and it wants to torment they come ripping, they come tearing out. But with this spirit, we've noticed um, through experience, thanks to the team, um, a lot of times they grab the leg of a person and can feel where this spirit has wrapped around the leg. And they'll try to move. They always move around from one side of the body, left or right. They do this little dance. They try to, they try to get you distracted. And he got me on 30 of them, the first 30. And... Uh, 
Normally, I have the person, they'll place a hand, they sit between the belly button and the groin of a man or the belly button, the womb of a, of a woman. They lay like a, a crystal ball, literally. I could feel a crystal ball in their pelvic region. If they've had abortions, it feels like a brick. I don't know why that is, but through, again, through just on-the-job training, uh, people wouldn't disclose information. People don't like to share their dark, dirty secrets. They think we're going to judge them. They think we're going to condemn them. But I guarantee you, once they leave that door and the next person comes in, we've forgotten all about it. But I started, really, I, I used to do it. I would place my hand on it. I'd ask them permission first. And I started feeling this brick, this heaviness on their pelvic bone. And for whatever reason, I, I asked this. I said, did you ever have an abortion? They said, yeah, I did. I had two of them. And so I said, you know what, will you just confess it to the Lord? Will you just repent of it? You know, because, hey, you, you allowed a demon of murder and death and frustration to come in. When you have an abortion, you're picking up these spirits to come in. Death, murder, frustration. So she did that. Well, I started noticing that character on people with abortions. It would sit like a brick. Other stuff would just be like this crystal ball. Anyway, they got me on 30 of them in the beginning. And uh, the, the spirits was speaking out of the person saying, ah, you're putting too much pressure. Okay. Again, these spirits, if you think about having a tail, one of the things they're trying to hold on, they don't want to, they don't want to go. They're trying to do everything they can do to hang on for their life. And so once this thing starts coming up, that's why I asked them to put pressure like a Heimlich maneuver. Pressure. If you think about hanging from something and you have someone pulling on you, pretty soon your hands are going to let go. That's what the spirit does by putting pressure. It lets go here, but now it attaches to your ribs, it attaches to your sternum, and it does this little dance between the throat and the sternum. Again, just going through experience of how these things operate, right? Yeah, so 30 of them, the spirit got me, and I, I stopped the deliverance. They, went home, they weren't delivered that day because the spirit was saying, Ah, oh, you're hurting me. There's too much pressure. Stop. And I did. And the Lord told me that night. He said, Why did you stop that? And I said, Well, I, I don't want to beat the person up. I already do that as it is. I don't want to beat them up any more than I have to. <laughs> Mike tells me I'm a tarantula. You know, I'm working on that. Pray for me. I'm working on that. But... But he got me, and then I confirmed that with Mike. I didn't tell him what the Lord said, but I confirmed that Mike said, oh, the devil tricked you. He got you. Like he did in the beginning. He got you. You listened to him. That was the devil talking. So I said, all right, you know what? I'm looking for number 31. And when 31 came in, I said, listen. I said, this is what's going to happen. It could happen, but I'm just going to tell you ahead of time. I'm not stopping. So you can say all you want, because I know it's not you speaking, it's the devil speaking. So they get this, they're like, okay, I said, do I have your permission to just keep going? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, sure enough, ah, oh, stop it. Nope, not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, okay, this thing, oh, bucket right there. So started learning this, these men, how they worked, right? So after that... I said, no, no more mercy. No, I'm not quitting. We're not giving in. We're not giving up. So these spirits, that's how they operate. But they do this little dance. They bring in oral sex demons afterward with them. Why they do that, I don't know. doesn't mean that you've ever done it or ever had it. It's just they're letting more of these spirits in to torment you and harass you. A lot of times people have come in and said, they took my voice away. I can't sing. I used to be a worship singer. That's, that also works with the spirit of Leviathan. So you got to kind of discern, be a discerner of the spirits and find out which one is operating at that time. But most likely, if you've gone and had oral sex, this demon is going to try to choke you, try to choke your throat. And so they're like, there's something stuck in my throat. It'll be the last remnants of it. And so a lot of times you'll hear us down at the altar um, calling out the oral sex D. Her name's Jasmine. Um, Wynn Worley, that came from Wynn Worley. He did the research on that. And you know what? Hey, I've, I've been going with it and it's been working. So I'm going to stick with that until it doesn't work because that's the thing that comes out. Leviathan will also get you to stop worshiping the Lord. His main goal, like that worshiper, we've had women that came in and said, I, I need to sing to him. I need my voice back. He doesn't want you praising the Lord. He doesn't want you worshiping him because he knows he's in trouble. Praise and worship, like I talked about in the beginning, wow, brings you up out of darkness brings you into the light sometimes it's hard to pray sometimes when you're being trialed you're going through tribulation it's hard to go Jeez. it was hard for me I didn't want anything to do with the Holy Ghost that was the last person I wanted to talk to but praise when you no matter how hard it is when you just say, I love you Lord 
The next day, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you. It gets easier. The more you praise, the more these things start breaking down. Uh, so anyway, that's on Louise. What does she do? She breaks homes and marriages. You get difficulty getting married. Many people confess that they have broken relationships. This is a symptom of the spirit, broken relationships along the way. Rejection, okay? Four or five women, five, uh, five husbands, five wives. Yeah, there's a spirit at operation, okay? Um, they attack God's work. No kidding. I was used to attack God's servant, man of God. I didn't even know it. I was under a spirit then. I didn't know it. Servants in churches falling into sexual sin. Yeah, again, if you're a born-again Christian and you have been called by God to do anything for God, you have got a bullseye. You've got a target on your back. Like a military jet fire who's got the crosshairs, target locked, Satan has got a bullseye upon your back. They don't want anyone else around who cares for you, your kids, your spouses. They want you all to themselves. They're jealous. Like our God is a jealous God, they're jealous too. They don't want you close to anybody. There will be times at night when you're laying next to your husband, and the husband does this little thing in the middle of the night, wraps that on, wanting to get a little playtime. That woman throws that hand off. She's not interested. That's that spirit husband in her that says, get your hands off of my wife. She belongs to me. It's that powerful. I know a couple that had financial difficulties at one time that uh, she would walk out her front door and she would find money in her mailbox. She would go to the store and people would just hand her money. The Lord told me to give you money. And uh, this spirit husband would take the place of her husband, giving her provision. Okay, if the, if the husband isn't providing for the wife, the spirit husband will come in and provide for you. So that you can focus on all the unworthiness, on all the faults of your husband. They're deceptive. They're smarter than we are. Okay? They work together. They don't want you to be blessed with a baby. So, again, they can be responsible for miscarriages, blocked orgasms. I know a couple personally that were told they couldn't have a baby. Can you imagine a young couple that wants to have kids today? That's rare. This young couple was told that they couldn't have kids. And once these spirits got casted out, guess what? Baby Jim came along. <laughs> Baby Samantha came along. Yeah, they don't want you to further God's kingdom. They hate his guts. Financial hardships, if you have anything, if you've done anything with your money, like Brother Mike talked about gambling, I don't want your money, okay? All this brings in confusion. You'll have financial hardship, marital discord, sex and dreams, wrong decisions, neglect, regret. Yeah. A woman who complains about intimacy of lovemaking with your husband, her needs aren't being met, you can't figure out why, okay? This spirit spouse makes you feel so unworthy. Your husband can be the worst of the lot, and yet this spirit will tell you that you're not good enough for him. So what does the wife do? Generally, she'll go out, she'll lose some weight, she'll divvy herself up, she'll go into a program, but it's not going to work. This spirit already knows that that spirit working in your husband is going to reject you. You're going to waste all your time and energy focusing on yourself to please your husband. And this spirit that's operating him, he's going to reject you. He operates through that. That's how he comes in. The spirit wife in a husband causes him to neglect his wife. How's he do it again? He wants to keep him all to himself. He cuts off her emotional needs, financial needs, the need to be loved, the need to be held, this spirit comes in and neglects her through that. In the, in the cases also, the wife will neglect the husband. It's always not about the wife being neglected. Men get neglected too, okay? If the man is neglecting the head of the household, again, if he's not providing for her, she's going to have thoughts of that worthlessness, she's going to be not good enough. All these spirits are going to come in and say, hey, your husband's not good enough. And then she gets this thought, hey, I don't want to be with this guy. And this cycle continues over and over and over again until you get delivered, until these spirits are cast out. Someone will have dreams of swimming in water. Again, they're all associated with marine spirits, water spirits, missing monthly cycle, painful menstruations. That's a big, big one. Seeing unfamiliar men sleeping by your side, dreams of being left at the altar. Yeah, some people have dreams that they're going to be alone or they're being left at the altar or even in a public place. They feed on our weaknesses. The next morning you wake up lonely. You, you get the feeling of waking up lonely. 
So the next night, what does he do? Yep, he brings a comforter. He brings in that spirit spouse to comfort you, to tell you you're not alone. And if you welcome him in, you're in big trouble. He produces a natural desire to be married or not to marry due to, due to them being linked in the, into the spirit. Yeah, you got to be watchful who you're sowing intimacy with, ungodly soul ties that are being formed, allowing the spirit to come in. Christ said if we lust in our hearts, we are joined to that person. Should we join ourselves to be a member of harlotry? No. He causes sexual abuse in dreams, dreams of bathing by rivers, causing delays, difficulties in conception. Yeah, that was a spirit that kept those people infertile. Causes people to love pleasures to the extreme. Anna Nicole Smith. They attack your spiritual growth like Leviathan. Mind control. Again, Win Worley did a, a great uh, little booklet on mind control. He's associated with this. He attacks the worker's mind. He attacks the frontal lobe. If you have a, put a hand over the person, you actually can feel these things trying to move, trying to get out. His cover has a spirit of the octopus, the, the, the octopus. It's not a physical octopus that's on your brain. It's symbolic of him capturing the mind. Again, he works in operation of the soul. Okay, and so a lot of times this spirit will stunt your growth. He brings in a special torment through masturbation. His main goal is through masturbation. He wants to get you addicted to lust. A lot of people will say, hey, I've mastered this problem. I've already mastered this masturbation. But you know what? During the middle of the night, they masturbate. They have orgasms, and they can't catch it in time. Why? Because they put that person in a trance. And the next day, you know what that devil does, that spirit does? He gloats over it. He puts a bunch of shame, a bunch of guilt onto you. Hey, you're a Christian. What are you doing that for? Okay? All this condemnation, those who are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. That condemnation isn't coming from the Lord. But a lot of times you're powerless to stop it, and you don't know why. It causes a loss of desire for the spouse. Again, ah, he's jealous. She's jealous. Some choose fantasizing. Woo, sexual daydreaming. Not a good thing. Insanity, mental illness. Strife, suffering, pride, these all operate under the spirit of Leviathan. Pride, arrogance, stubbornness, unteachable, lack of concentration, learning problems, deafness, blindness to the Holy Ghost. I was blind that night. I needed help. I needed to, to seek out the wise counsel. I couldn't do it on my own. Refusal to submit to authority. Okay? They reject God. All they want to do is get you separated from God. They don't want you serving him they don't want you to have anything to do with him why they want to tear you down they want you to be a spiritual slave to him through sexual immorality ah now we come to what's love got to do with it ah one corinthians ah, love conquers all now faith hope and love these things remain the greatest of these is love yeah love this demon of rejection operates through spirit husband or spirit wife they come in, they can be inherited through lust, fornication, adultery, perversion. Hey, you're a whoremonger. Your dad was a whoremonger. Your great-grandpa was a whoremonger. Your great-great-dandy was a whoremonger. There's adultery coming down. Guess what? Your son's going to be one too. If you don't get these things cut off and cast it out, your kids are on the menu. Your son's on the menu. Your wife's on, your, your daughter's on the menu. Okay. It says, when my father and mother forsake me, then Jehovah will take me up. Do you know that you have never been rejected by your heavenly father? He loves you dearly. He'll never forsake you and he'll never leave you. That's the truth that has to get in. That's the truth that has to come in. God's love is what matters. His love will never fail. Human love will always fail. God's love never fails. So what does it do? It opens a door to unloving spirit. It causes a person to feel rejected even though they're not rejected. Rejection is a spirit of being unwanted. It's a desperation of wanting people to love you, even when you're convinced they don't. Okay? They work through deception. There's an aching desire to be a part of something. They want to have their identity sewed into something. Three things we need is love, significance, acceptance. Isaiah 54 had talked about a deep wound of re rejection for a woman. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken, grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth when thou hast was views, saith thy God. If a father and mother didn't want you, you didn't want to be pregnant, it was going to put a hardship on the family, emotionally it gets way to all these spirits to enter in, this rejection spirit. It's trauma of any kind. It doesn't have to be sexual. 
It can be physical. It can be emotional. It can be mental abuse. It compensates to have the person withdraw. They go in the shell. That's what I did. I was shy. I withdrew from people. The spirit wants to isolate you, to be alone, so that feelings of loneliness, abandonment can come in when that wasn't the truth. Children growing up with fathers lack identity, and it results in one trying to find one. These women that have been raped by an older man when they were younger go to seek men who are older. They've got a soul tie developed to that. For every person that you have sex with, you have formed a demonic soul tie too. And so these women that were raped by older men now are married to older men. They're looking for that father figure, that identity that they never had to replace. They're looking for somewhere, that security, that love from a human to replace that. And you'll never get it. Why? Wounds are hidden. Wounds are hidden. The leaves like the limbs of a tree. Okay, those are the things that you can see. What you don't see is the tap root, the root that's hidden underneath. Outward signs of addiction, lust, pornography, smoking, eating, food, cocaine, those are all its leaves. Preaching can sometimes prune it off. You can cut that tree down. The stump remains, but the root still remains of that, the root of rejection. It's not the symptom of adultery, fornication, or fantasy. The root of it is rejection. So you got to pull this thing up by its root. Victims that overemphasize rejection spirit stay self-hating. Why? Rejection is a byproduct of rejection. For those of you who haven't gone through, you might want to look up Brother Mike's video of overcoming rejections, Ephesians 1. It'll give you even greater detail about how this spirit operates through rejection. But rejection gives you a spirit of unworthiness, unwantingness that breeds in self-hatred. That self-hatred now breeds in negative behavior, negative emotions. It causes, influences that person to go out and be comforted by carnal pleasures, external pleasures. Now the devil wakes you up and says, hey, you're rejected. This whole cycle continues until you what? Come out of the lies of the deception. This negative self-talk that you've got going on, you've got to come out of agreement with it. Okay? This unloving spirit makes a person not feel loved. He blocks the ability to receive love. Brings on addictions for the need to be loved. Yeah, there's a good chance that these spirits are at root through addiction, unclean spirits. And he can hinder the person not to receive love or give love. You'll notice people trying to give love and they're like, they're so standoffish. They're like, no, they've got this wall built up between them. And that root is needing to be loved. That's why a person can go to bed at night and wake up 500 pounds the next day. Because they're feeding through their addiction of food. They're trying to satisfy an unmet need. They're trying to get anywhere, any kind of satisfaction that they can get. They're trying to fill it through the natural instead of the supernatural. God's love. That's why when we go through deliverance, we're trying to get the love of God into that person. It's not just about deliverance. It's really seeking out the love of God. His love. Amen. That will never fail you. Unloving spirits make way for lust, perversion, a means to find love. If a pregnant mother attempts or talks about an abortion, okay, that baby knows it inside that womb. He's hearing those curses spoken over them. Parents spoke in a statement of not wanting or rejecting that child. That can open up a daughter later in years for this spirit to attack them. Be careful of your words. Our words are filled with life or death. The power of life and death is in the tongue, it says. Right? The strong man of fear, childhood sex, rape, molestation, they come in through fear, through panic attacks. Many of these people are diagnosed with bipolar. Bipolar comes in to calm the child down. Only later in life as an adult to become this raging maniac. They've done a flip inside this person. And if a man or woman starts sleeping around with people, they're still able to behave like a lady or a gentleman. Okay? But they're going to continue to leave their mark on you, they'll manifest later in life. They might not manifest now, but they will manifest later in life, waiting for the prime opportunity. Five appointments that day. Ugh. Waiting to prey on your weaknesses. Okay? You are on a buy now, pay later schedule. Okay? How careless we are to miss an eternity for a moment of sexual carnal pleasure. That's the power of these things. You are setting yourself up for a demonic nightmare. Okay? They catch us during our sleep. They snuggle with you again. They want to isolate you so they can come in and give you a false sense of comfort and love.
He progresses as you get older, having sex with you. Yep. He brings in a gorgeous mate. Some people have seen that they've seen him wearing a black suit. Ooh, they were so handsome. If you really see them for what they are, they're nasty, filthy demons. That woman, that preacher that night said, I saw my pastor's eyes in that demon looking at me. Again, how does he capture men and women? Adornments of hairstyles that arouse sexual interests, tight-fitting clothes, licentious appetites. Yep. Many who are trying to attract the opposite sex, they're actually attracting a spirit husband. Tempting. They get you through perversion, through masturbation, pornography, oral sex. Again, sexual immorality. Again, they want you to bend the will to their will so they can make you their slave. Incest, rape, prostitution, flirting, lust of the eyes. Yeah, dangerous. You're creating a demonic soul tie. You are the potential of creating a demonic soul tie of lust, perverted lust, burning lust that can't be satisfied into your body. Matthew 13, 25, while men were sleeping in hostile, one came to him and sowed Darnell in the midst of the wheat and went away. Satan's intention to sow tears, to cause trouble, to cause havoc, confusion. They come to disrupt your sleep. Okay, while you're sleeping, all of a sudden you're awakened with this fear, with this panic, this paralyzing fear, this pressure, this heaviness on your chest. You see a shadow out of the corner of your eye. Night stalkers, then it goes away. Okay, these tears are thoughts, they're words, they're pictures that flow into your soul. They, if they are watered and nurtured, they will become soul covenants, married to you in Isaiah 28. If these spiritual husbands can't have you in the natural way, they'll try to have you in a supernatural way through your dreams, perverted dreams. The ones being troubled, vexed. Akleo is a Greek word that means vexed or molested by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Yeah, these spirits want to violate you to help you feel cheap, dirty, shamed, guilty. Your dream life now goes from purity to filthy. Certain men slipped in stealthy, the ones having been old, written before his judgment. Yep, certain men can flow into women's lives. People unaware are using their gifts to impart lasciviousness, lasciviousness, lust, lewdness, unbridled lust, ungodly ones perverting the grace of our God into unbridled lust, denying the only master God, even our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude 1.8, likewise indeed also these dreaming ones even defile the flesh, reject the lordship. The apostle was pointing out the agnostic beliefs. Total freedom from authority. They believe that a person was free to do whatever they chose. Whatever they wanted to do to debauch himself in any way, by the grace of God, I will be forgiven. Free sex. The number one problem is this of the church, the apostasy. No one wants to be governed. No one wants to be held under the authority of God. That fruit of the Spirit, self-control, they use their freedom as a mask of maliciousness to impart lust, perversion. Now the works of the flesh are clearly revealed. Adultery, fornication, the strong desire of lust is working in the flesh. It soon becomes unbridled. Wet dreams, masturbation that you never had before. You wake up and you go, who am I? I? I didn't have this before. I didn't have this before I had that soul tie, that covenant that was made. I didn't have this before I had sex with this demon. Yeah, they come in through inner vows, statements that you made. Hey, he's going to be my husband. She's going to be my wife. Okay? They reach out to the spirit world, literally. They're forming marriage covenants. You spoke that vow. He's going to be my wife. She's going to be my wife. He's going to be my husband. You are making a spiritual covenant in that realm. The devil heard that and in that spiritual realm, and now he's going to make sure he sends you a spiritual husband or wife, one that was never meant for you to begin with, a hinder mate. It's fleshly directed, okay? It's all about the works of the flesh. As a person matures, 11, 12, 13, the person starts to masturbate. Series of bad relationships, yep. He'll start bringing in pornography magazines will start being left around for you to look at again he's trying to get you addicted to lust the strong man is the rejection spirit the spirit husband or spirit wife is the stronghold and he is likened to a conductor he's controlling everything before the sexual lusting before the masturbation he sends that spirit of rejection to work through you here's kind of a, a video that will tell you about the power of Oh, that's right, just walk away. I don't want to talk to her, you like this? Well, go then. She's trying to I'm help. I'm away from you. You see what you've done this time? This is all your fault. 
we all living in this family. It's a bloody selfish. Wait a minute. Let's have a read, shall we? Back to <laughs> He says, I'm really mature for my age. <laughs> Loser more like. Please, Is this stop your it. boyfriend? <laughs> he sits next to me in English classes. <laughs> what boy would want to sit next to you? I can't believe you write this drivel. It's pathetic. Pathetic. Do you think I'm here to clear up after you? You're useless. Do you know that? She's not here anymore, is she? To look after you. And it's not my job. Grow up, you worthless idiot! Whether it's words, constant criticism, or even a silence, if you hear it often enough, you might start to believe it. This is emotional abuse. If it's happening to you, don't ignore it. You can talk to Childline. Any kind of trauma. The demons using the abuser are heartless. Okay? They have no remorse. They enjoy entertainment of watching the victim receive blow after blow after blow. Spirits of hatred, anger, loathing, dislike, death, murder, offense, they all come in. This is a spirit that has inflicted a scar on that soul. How they come in together, how it works. Spirits of hurt, murder, and death work together with a spirit of force. The spirit of force is the actual spirit that is pushing the abuser to hurt the victim. Murder comes in and death. Murder wants to kill the victim spirit. Death then comes in later, waits for that victim to die prematurely. All he wants to do is kill, steal, and destroy. Pain and punish come in to cause the pain. Hate, dislike are all their accomplices. The offense is the one that is using the swear words. The spirit of offense is manipulating the abuser to use those words to punish, to inflict their will upon you, pain, torture. The reason why victims rarely fight back is a spirit of stupor. They put the victim in a trance-like state, a numbing state, okay? They don't have enough power to overpower the spirit, and they feel victimized. They feel insignificant. So now what they do? They give in to obedience to their abuser. The abuser then is left with a spirit of shame, reminding him how pathetic he is. This, we're talking about the abuser, the one doing the abuse. Pity will remain in him, the disappointment. They work together to bring down the abuser spiritually, reminding him that this was not God's way. He's not a child of God. Now you should be ashamed. He puts those thoughts in there. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a Christian and you're behaving that way. Now that division comes in. And he divides and a spirit of separation comes in between the victim and the abuser to stop it. But the cycle will only continue unless the abuse stops, the rejection gets taken care of, the people go through deliverance. This setup, this system will continue to go on throughout the victim and the abuser's life. They're numbed. Rejected family members, this rejection spirit, self-rejection, fear of being rejected... Okay? These leave a lasting scar on your soul. The family member receiving the rejection actually fears rejection, self-rejection. They fear these things. And what comes in? Insecurity, poor self-concept, low self-esteem, self-accusation, jealousy, okay? self-pity, fear of being criticized, despair, depression, discouragement. These are all the spirits that the spirit husband hides under. They mask themselves under it. If you're ignorant, you can spend a lifetime trying to casting him out, wearing yourself down, being frustrated over your deliverance because it's tiring. Let's face it, deliverance is tiring. Most people give in after a while through fatigue, but Jesus said you must bind the strong man lest he spoil your goods. Regrets, suicide, 
guilt, shame, unworthiness. These are all spirits that come in and hide under the spirit husband or spirit wife. Again, we must bind the strong man. We talked about the leaves on the tree, the limbs, the lust, the addictions. Those are all the leaves. These roots, torment, anxiety, nightmares, those are all the roots of the carrot. But until you pull out the root of fear, it's just going to keep coming back at you. you got to be a root person. Pride, perfectionism, withdraw, pouting, self-pity, daydreaming again, timidity, shyness, loneliness. Yeah, they want to get you to be lonely so they can comfort you. Okay, You're not able to drink the cup of the Lord and a cup of demons. You're not able to partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. What does that look like eating from the, t the, d the devil's table? Well, it looks like that, not feeling God's touch or hearing him. Yeah, went through that. Sitting without being troubled, you've got a seared conscience. Wow, those are hard to, to deal with. A seared conscience is very difficult to deal with, and you've got a hardened heart. I had a hardened heart for God. I hated God when I first started. I hated Him for what He was doing, allowing those things. God will allow some things in your life to equip the saints for the work that the God has called you to do. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to go through some tribulations, some spiritual weakness. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one and love the other. Otherwise, you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You will start getting constant sicknesses, dependence on drugs, unexplained stomach issue. The devil feeds on sin. He wants to feed you with his cheap food of negativity, lies. That's all he loves to do. Okay? What are our spiritual weapons on how to defeat them? Yeah, my spiritual weapon was truth. God used truth to get back to me. But he used a person of wise counsel to get that into me. Sometimes you do need people, okay? Sometimes you need the help of a person. God's mighty arm. That's what I felt that day. Oh, Jehovah, God of hosts, who is strong like you. Your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the pride of the sea when its waves rise high. You steal them. Remember Jesus, how he rebuked the storm? He rebuked the demon that was causing that uproar. So you've got his mighty right arm. Call upon these scriptures to do battle for you. You have crushed Rahab as one slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty right arm. Again, wah, the blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of Christ. Nothing is greater. Nothing beats the blood of Christ. Nothing is greater than the blood of the Lamb. Okay, a lot of times it's hard to call the name of Jesus when you're paralyzed by this demon of mare. But do you know what? If you call out his name, he will leave. He'll leave you for a time. But you still have to cast that spirit out. He'll leave you for a season. He'll leave you for a time. But unless those spirits get casted out, they're going to come back. Your wealth and wares and your goods, your seam and your sailors, making strong your seams and traitors of your goods. Yeah. When you're delivered of this spirit husband or spirit wife, the spiritual gatekeeper falls. Fear, anxiety, worry, depression, hatred of men, hatred of women. All those burdens are going to fall. They're going to fall into the heart of the seas. You have to break down the altar that was built up, operating in your life, breaking up your marriage, relationship, destroying the relationships with your kids, destroying your life with sickness. Okay, The gatekeeper is going to fall when you get these things out of your life. How do you do it? Ah, praise, worship. Yeah, thank you, Lord. How I love you, Lord. Speaking in tongues, breaking covenants. Yeah, your spiritual warfare will give you, break down that false glory, that false comfort, that false love that comes in. It's all a lie. It's all de deception. Confess out loud scriptures promising deliverance. I put them up here, Luke 10, Ephesians 1, Romans 16, Psalms 91, Colossians. Bind, repent, bind, lay, tear, repent of any sexual sin. Hey, you've got to repent. You've got to have godly sorrow. Can you go back to that last screen? Yeah. You've got to come to Christ, confess your sins, for He is just to forgive us of all our sin and cleanse us with all unrighteousness. Okay? Repentance is the key. Okay? Start laying hands on that womb, like we talked about, the Heimlich maneuver. Translate. Start getting after these things. The violent take it by force, it says in Revelation. Des destroy that spiritual contract that you've made unknowingly in the spiritual realm. You've got to come out of agreement with him, first of all. You've got to hate him destroying your marriage, destroying your life, destroying your finances that are happening in your life. Lord, you said you would cut off my enemies in truth. You would cut off the spirit of princes. Hallelujah. You would cut off the remnant of Baal. Yes. Now the prince shall be cast out. Yes. What does that look like? The invisible war. Sometimes you don't even see what God is doing in your life. 
See, we walk by faith. We don't walk by sight. But guess what? Guess who came to do it all? Arnie, is the audio up again? Not too loud. It's finished. That concludes the seminar for tonight. Brother Mike's going to come and uh, uh, we're going to call Brother Mike to come up for the altar. He's going to take uh, the Q and A, some questions and answers that you might have about spiritual spouse. YouTubers, stay online to go through the deliverance of the spirit that's been tormenting you, that's been harassing you, and stealing your life, stealing every good gift that God has given to you. Tonight is your night. Every night is your night. Every day is your night to be free. But tonight, if you just stand in front of your computer, go through what Brother Mike's going to lead you through this deliverance. The team's going to come up. We're, we're going to all pray for you, okay? Tonight is the night of freedom. It's time to evict him or break free. Amen. Amen. Thank you. How'd that go? Good? Okay. I never figured. All right. Any question, questions in this section before we go to prayer? Nothing? Any questions in this section before we go to prayer? How about this section? Ma'am? Okay, she just asked a question that's uh, uh, routinely prevalent in Christianity. She said, what if you married somebody who's a certified disaster? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing for her. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Yeah, you have to make sure you get yourself clean first. Okay? Secondly, you have to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of trying to fix your spouse. That's a demonic trap. The devil will try and get you to see how deeply spiritual you are, how well you're doing. And then he'll try to trick you into sharing your deep spiritual knowledge with your spouse. As soon as you fall into that trap, it won't be long before you'll be back out drinking again. In the garage. Okay? You have to turn your crazy sick spouse over to the Lord. And the Holy Ghost, if He sees you've released them, He'll make a move on them. He'll crack them for you. What if that person knows the Lord and is still a carnal Christian? Welcome to normal Christianity here in America. Same process. If you try to fix a carnal Christian, that's a trick from Satan and you'll destroy yourself. Because they don't listen. They won't listen. 
they have to be broken. And you can't break them. That's called a, an assault. That's a felony. <laughs> See, by, it's a faith act. You have to release that spouse to God by faith and let them go. And if you'll do that, he'll make a move on them and crack them. If you don't do that, he won't do anything. You have to live the rest of your married life until you get divorced in misery. Because what you're saying is, if you keep trying to fix them, you're saying you're, you know better than God does. And you can't fix your spouse. Nobody married here? Well, let me explain it to you. <laughs> Spouses can't be fixed by other spouses. That's not going to happen. Because spouses don't listen to spouses. You know, it takes a lot of faith to keep your mouth shut. You know that? That takes Wigglesworth faith for most people. You're going to have Paul faith to keep your mouth shut. But the more you run that, the deeper into bondage the other spouse goes. And you have to just release them and let them go, even if they're suffering. You have to just trust God that what they have to suffer with, He'll take care of it. So if there is like illegal activity? Illegal activity? Now, if there's illegal activity going on or somebody's in danger or something like that, well, then you gotta, you got to leave. You know, you got to take a temporary separation. But I'm talking about spiritually, emotionally. You cannot fix that person. But the trick is... He'll try to get you to fix them. Because you know more spiritually than they do. Because you see yourself as the non-carnal spouse. And so you'll try to fix the other person. Trust me, it never works. And then it just about never works. Sir? No. That yeah, it doesn't make the obvious answer in like the church is, oh, of course that's not true. What you're saying, you're always saying it's right. No, that's not true either. Um, this guy just said, said a series of things that were false. Um, what happens is uh, when you get born again, this Holy Spirit enters your spirit, man, if you're truly saved. And he changes your conscience. Because when you were living in sin, your conscience was seared. And you were sinning and didn't really care. And sometimes sinning and didn't know it was a sin. So from the moment you get born again, the Holy Spirit in your conscience is your guide with God's Word. So the person just naturally changes over a period of time. They don't change immediately. So you got to have some love and grace for people and give them a, some space to change. Well, they were talking about Christians who were deliberately and willfully disobeying. Right? Okay. Well, that's not you, is it? All right. So, we don't need to worry about them. We don't need to worry about them. We're just worrying about you. And you're here tonight because you don't want to be like those Christians in Jude. Right? You don't want to have demons. You don't want to have spirit spouses. You don't, you don't want to live in sin. I mean, I'm talking for you. I'm hoping that's 
what you're thinking. <clears throat> but tonight's uh, the, the focus then is on if you had a promiscuous background, if, if you had that kind of thing in your family tree, if you had whoredom spirits around, you know, if you don't get them out, they're going to transfer right down to your children. And your kids are going to start that up after they go through puberty. They're going to start doing it just like you did. Yeah. And most people don't want their kids to end up like them. Most parents want something better for their kids. Usually. Well, that's a, that's a different subject. She wants to know about people that are severely mentally ill and can they get spontaneously delivered and different things like that, you know. Is anybody here tonight uh, severely mentally ill? I don't, mean, I don't mean you act that way. I mean, have you been diagnosed? What was your diagnosis, sir? Bipolar. Bipolar. Borderline. Okay. Anybody else? Sir? Bipolar. Bipolar. Three. Three here tonight. Okay. Four. Ma'am, what was your diagnosis? Bipolar. Okay. Bipolar is the most common one now. That one's spreading like wildfire. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, people that have bipolar very commonly have spirit spouses. If they don't have spirit spouses, they usually have bad lust demons. Is that true? Huh? That is true. That is true. Eh? Yeah. true. Who is that person over here? True. True there? How about the fourth one? Was that true with the fourth one? You got borderline? Do you have lust demons? Kind of. <laughs> that uh, other personality there doesn't want to come clean. Okay. Uh, those four people here have these terrible lust spirits, and these spirits are given to the person by the controlling spirit in the person's brain as a benefit to them, as a blessing. The lust demon is, is your blessing from the devil so that you can escape from the torment of the other spirits, the bipolar spirits, the borderline, those are worse. So the lust demon gives you a chance to take a break and you get into some kind of a vice, alcohol, drugs, sex, food, whatever it is, gambling. Sir? That's bipolar and depressive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, the, the lust thing is a trick of the devil to bless you. All, all, all addicts have them. <clears throat> the other spirits torment the person, and then the lust spirit says, hey, wait a minute, I want you to take a break from that miserable existence, and then foster that, whatever it is, porn, food, whatever. But the problem is after that high goes down after the orgasm drops, after the food's gone, then the other spirits kick back in and start tormenting the person again. And it becomes a cycle. Right, sir? Yeah. The, the, the bipolar spirits in the brain are torturing the person. And they're attacking their soul. And they have up and down emotions like that. But the lust demon steps in and goes, hey, take a break. Click. Drugs. Booze, porn. porn, common, yeah. But the lust demon's not the problem. He's he's in a symptom of it. Okay. 
Now, these four people that raise their hands, <clears throat> you four are in deep trouble. Okay? And in order for you to get delivered, you cannot be a casual Christian. It will not work. You cannot casually come down here tonight. You come down here tonight with everything you've got. And you're going to give everything up tonight. Everything goes. Your future, your plans, your life, what you want, what you think you need, everything goes tonight. You hand yourself over to the Lord tonight or you die ugly. And that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to die and you're going to die ugly. And you're going to die alone. And that's the only choice you have. You don't have a backup choice. You jack around with these mental illness demons, you're going to die. They don't fool around with you. They torture you before they kill you. The Holy Ghost is well able to deliver you. But you got to surrender everything you've got to get delivered. You, did you hear me, ma'am? Yes. You cannot be a church Christian. You can't be a casual Christian. You can't do it. It's too late for you. You've been taken. And if you're not willing to do that, love you anyway. We love you. I love you. There's nothing we can do. Nothing can be done. Thus saith the Lord, Do not fear him who can kill the body, and afterward can do nothing. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him who after he has killed the body can destroy both body and soul in hell. I say unto you, fear him. <clears throat> you want to get delivered tonight? You want to get healed? You better get your godly fear and reverence back. And some of you are going to die ugly. Well, how do you know that? You're just talking negative. Listen, I know demons. I've had some experience with them. I know what kind of personality most of them have. They're cold-blooded killers. And they will lull you into sleep before they kill you. I'll try to get you at night, like Kelly said. At night, you're off guard. That's not going to happen to you, though. You know why? You're going to repent tonight. You know why? Because you're sick of this world. You can't stand it anymore. You've had enough. You had it up to here. Yeah. Correct. Right. And that's why I'm scared. They're not saved anymore. I always question, like, did I just lose my salvation? Okay, here's some good news for this guy. Yeah, exactly. It feels that way. That was a great revelation there. See, demons make you feel like you're lost. And the most common thing they tell you is, A, you lost your salvation. And another big one is, you committed the unpardonable sin. What's the good news with this guy? What's your name? What's the good news with Justin? He came here tonight. What's that telling you about Justin? He's still saved. 
He came here for help. That means he's still saved. Is he sinning? Yeah, he, but he doesn't want to sin. That's what he's really saying. He's talking to me about Jude, see? The demons are trying to use Jude on him. And here's what they're telling him. You went too far. You're screwed, boy. It's exactly the opposite. He read Jude and he said, hey, I don't want that to happen to me. You know why? The Holy Ghost in him is telling him, hey, come down and repent and get healed. I love you. I love you. Yes, sir. I noticed that almost in two years now, uh, when I go to bed at night, yeah. and I don't have bad dreams anymore, mm -hmm. ever. And the reason why I say that, because uh, when it turns out that way, mm -hmm. I made a fact that when that happens, mm -hmm. I always tell the Lord, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that not only to watch over me, mm -hmm. but to always be with me as well. Mm -hmm. Now, when I end up having this funky dream, mm -hmm. I end up using the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When I have at times, I've had sexual dreams, I've had dreams of suicide, mm -hmm. name it. I know. I've had and eat and every I know. I'm always in that dream. Satan, lousy, foul, demon. You will not have no place over me. <laughs> you let me lie to sleep. You're a liar. You're in the kitchen. Hmm. I'm a child of that. Hmm. I'm a lot of men. Men are on the head. In his face. No. No. All right, I found my next preacher for this next seminar. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the questions then. All right, let's, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, tonight a uh, uh, serious subject, a serious subject was brought to us by, uh, by Kelly. Uh, America is now loaded with spirit spouses, spirit wives, spirit husbands. They're all over the place now because America chose sin. And these demons are running crazy in our society. But tonight, at the Deliverance Center, no, they're going to be running out the door. Father, every single person here tonight that's willing to repent, and turn their lives over to you completely and stop cheating on you, every person here tonight who's willing to make a complete change and surrender their hearts to the Lord, and stop holding out on him. Every single person who prays by faith and takes authority over this spirit, this lust spirit, that thing's going to come out. And it's going to leave. I know it will, Lord. If I know you love these people, these are my friends. They're your friends. And you care for them. You love them. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Come out. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. Katakrama is the Greek word for condemnation. It means there is no judgment from God to those who are in Christ. Jude does not apply to you tonight. This guy here decided to repent, and I didn't even ask him to. And the demons immediately started coming out. If you will repent right now, Father God, I beg you to forgive me. Come on. Father God, I beg you to forgive me. I slept with people. I watched stuff. I did things I should have never done. And the devil caught me. The devil caught me. And I want this ugly lust spirit, this monster, this home wrecker, this marriage destroyer, I want this killer out of me right now in Jesus' mighty name. Right, right now. 
Now, you heard the seminar tonight, and you heard Kelly. If you have a spirit husband or a spirit wife that you picked up from somebody you should never have been with, you just stand up right now. If you've got a spirit spouse, you think you've got one, you stand up right now. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got a spirit spouse, the spirit spouse, those four people that mentioned earlier, they had uh, SMI. Can you just come down here and stand right here to my right? Those four people. Stand right here with me. There's four of you. It was an SMI. One of them was a borderline. Those demons are monsters. Stand right here. <coughs> SMI. Now, there's more than four people here. Bipolar. You're bipolar. Oh, good. Stand right here. Over here. You bi was you sitting over there? Yes. Okay. You bipolar? No, but I mean, never been diagnosed, but... Uh, you have those symptoms? Lifelong misogynist. Uh, okay. Ready? I'm going to pray for you first. Have the ministry team come down here for a minute. Close your eyes now. Here we go. Close your eyes. God, come out of that body. Come on now. I repent of thinking I'm not saved. I repent of thinking I lost my salvation. I repent of sitting around listening to demons right now. I repent of every ugly man I ever slept with, every man that ever used me. I repent of it right now. I command this ugly, come out right now, get out of the body quickly. I command every ugly spirit of bipolar, come out of my body right this second. You stinking devil, come out of that body right now. I repent of living a life of evil, sin, and wickedness. Evil and wickedness, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of my body right now. Spirit of rejection, you gave me bipolar when I was a child. There it is right there. Come out of there right now. Get out of my body right now. Bad men, come out of there right this second. Come out. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Take a breath. There he is. Come out right now. Take a big breath. Come out, spirit of rejection. Go. Food demon, out right now. Come out of there. Quickly, come out. There he is. Come out right now. There he comes. Come out. Come out. Right this second. Evil, come out of me right now. Evil. Say it. Come out of me in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. I said come out of that body right now. Every ugly man that used my body, stole my money. Every one of them, all of them, leave my body. Come out. Leave my body right this second. Evil, sinfulness, wickedness, evil. Come out of me right now. Just repent of it. Evil. Just repent of it. Wickedness. Spirit, spouse, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. You pervert. You pervert. You come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Put your hand on your stomach. Put your hand just above your groin. Put your hand on your chest. I command you in the name of Jesus. I command you, you pervert. You stinking pervert of pornography. You filthy pervert of pornography. I bind your power right now. Come out now. By the authority. By the authority of the word of God. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Get out of my body right this second. Bipolar, borderline. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Evil. Wickedness. Uh, let me hear your gift of tongues. Go ahead. <laughs> Satan Satan Spirit of a perversion From my grandfather And my grandmother My great grandfather Spirit husband In the name of Jesus Christ I decided I hate your guts. I hate your guts and I want you out of my body at any cost. Come on now. It's going to cost you everything you've got to get healed. It's going to cost you everything you've got 
do it. Just do it. Satan, come out now. Come out of there. I want all these men out of me right now. Come out of there. There go. Get out. Come out. Get out, buddy. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. What? Just repent of it. You tell him you're sorry. Now. Tell him you're sorry. Come on. I'm so sorry, Jesus. There he comes, coming out. Come out. There they come. Come out of there, buddy. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Get out. <clears throat> Get out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out now. Get out of that body quick. Come out fast. Hurry up. Come out quicker. You get out of that body now. Come out right now. You come out right now. What is it? Just repent of it. Just repent of it. YouTubers, you go to the website right now, hardcorechristianity.com. There's a button at the top. It says post deliverance. You have to go through that post deliverance after this service so you do not lose your healing or your deliverance. There's another button at the top, a teaching button at the top of the website. Go to that button quickly. Read the article, How Satan Controls the Mind. Read the other article, Satan's Counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You're going to be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You've got to ward off that attack and keep going. You cannot sink back into sin. You cannot start recycling demons. If you do that, you will get sicker than you ever were before you came for deliverance the first time. You cannot do it. Read that article, How Satan Controls the Mind. If you did not finish your deliverance tonight, hit the self-deliverance button at the top of the website. Next Friday night, another deliverance and healing service, a Holy Ghost blowout. Rick will be here, 7 p.m., Thursday night, more healing and deliverance. Both of those services will be on live stream and YouTube. See you next time. For demons, you took crack, you took coke. Is that what you did? You smoking pot? You smoking pot. Hey, that's an open door for demons to enter your brain. The spirits got into your brain.